Hello and welcome back to Web Hosting Rewind where we help you start a successful website. In this video, I'm going to show you how to start a church website step by step. Now, starting a church website is one of the best things that you can do for your church because there are so many more things that you can do. You can reach out to your community in a much faster way. You can actually accept donations, which is another great way. Um, over the pandemic, we saw that you can actually host video uh, videos of your sermon live so that you can still connect with your audience. So in this video, I'm going to show you step by step. It's really easy. It'll probably take you less than 20 minutes if you watch this video and pause when needed, but it's actually really simple. So this is what we're going to do today. We are going to get web hosting and a domain name. I'm going to show you what that is and how to do it step by step. We are going to install WordPress and I think WordPress is the best solution for you because it's easy, it's fast, it's simple. And then we are going to share your content on social media. At the end, I'm going to talk about why you should do that. So let's go ahead and get right into it. The first thing that you want to do is get web hosting and a domain name. Now, if you click the first link in the description, it'll take you to the best web hosting provider for beginners. The reason why you need web hosting is simply because for your website to exist on the internet somewhere, it needs to be hosted. Now, what you'll do is when you click that first link in the description, it'll take you to this website and you'll be able to type in to see if your domain name is available. For example, um, you're going to type in maybe your church name and your city. For example, we can type in something like SBC Kenosha like this and then click search and we're going to see if it's available or not. And if it is available, we can add it to the to the cart. If it isn't available, we can try something else. Now, what I recommend that you do is look for something that's like a .com or a dot .org. Uh, stay away from anything else that's really not needed. But as you can see, sbckenosha.org is not available. It already should go to a church website. But what you can do is you can simply, when you click on that first link, you're going to play around just a little bit and find one that works for you. Like I said, you can use the name of your church and city, or you can use the initials, a uh, shortened version like A-M-E Kenosha uh, .org and see if that is available. And you can see that it's green. We can add it to the cart. Once you add it to the cart, you can move on to the next step. Now, before we move on to the next step, let me just take a minute to tell you why you should have your own domain name web hosting. When you have your own domain name and web hosting, it can't be taken from you as easily. There are other channels out there that will recommend that you get started for free, but if something happens, your domain name and web hosting can be taken from you if you start on a free plan. And of course, it's a tax write-off um, potentially if you are using uh, a domain name that you paid for and that you purchased. After you do that, you're going to simply click on proceed and you are going to walk through the process of getting a website. Now I recommend that you add on all the different protections that come with it. You see it says privacy and protection. Add that stuff on simply because, let's click that, simply because if you don't have this privacy and protection, people are gonna try and reach out to you and sell you services that you don't need. So just go through, take a couple minutes to sign up and purchase now. Once that happens, it's going to take you to a website where it's going to have you install WordPress. WordPress is a web hosting platform that I use and it's really easy, really simple for you to use. This is the back end of WordPress. If you want to create a new post, it's really simple and really easy. Pages, real simple and real easy. Uh, while we're here, let me just take you through a WordPress really quickly. If you wanted to upload a brand new sermon, let's say there was a, a video recording of a sermon or maybe just daily inspiration, you would create a new post. If there is something that maybe is like about the pastor or about the church, origins of the church, that's when you would create a new page. And it's really simple. I'll go into more in depth about uh, the back office of WordPress in just a second, but I wanted to cover that since we're here. Now, you're gonna walk through this process, just click the button to install WordPress. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna try and upsell you to buy a WordPress theme. Just go with the standard free theme for now. What I recommend that you do is get a premium WordPress theme. As you can see here, that premium WordPress theme, that's the second link in the description. When you, sec when you click that second link in the description, that's gonna take you over to this website. It's called themeforest.net. And what you can do here is you can simply type in church, just like this, hit enter, and you're gonna find premium WordPress themes that are built for churches. Now, a WordPress theme sits on top of your web hosting, and basically it will 
change the way that your website looks and feels. It'll actually also add a few features and functionality. For example, if we look at this one right here, it has a lot of sales and a lot of reviews. We can click preview. This is what your website could look like. And one of the cool things is, is that you can collect donations, you can sell stuff as you can see here. And that's all stuff that maybe you don't have it now, but you could actually install it later. You can change all of this if you wanted to, to make it more look like your churches, uh, maybe colors, if your colors are like purple and white and silver, you can make all of those changes. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But what I recommend that you do is come over to ThemeForest. Again, it's a second link in the description. Find one that you like. You're going to click on buy. You have to create an account. You click on buy. You're going to buy that. And just to show you this process here real quick. So once you purchase, you're going to go to downloads. And then you're going to come here where it says download. And you're going to simply download this right into your computer. Real simple, real easy. So we're going to click on download all documents and files that's going to send us a zip file and what we're going to do next is we are going to unzip this and this actually created more zips <laughs> which is okay we're looking for this one right here it says aardvark or whatever the name of the theme is that you purchase we're going to come back over to our wordpress dashboard we're going to go to appearance go to themes and then you're going to click on add new and then you can drag and drop that theme that we just downloaded by clicking upload theme and then you can drag and drop it right here just like this okay and then you're going to click on add now and then install or activate theme once you do that your theme is going to look really different which is good um, some some wordpress themes will allow you to install like a live preview or a template install that it'll make your life even easier okay and so once you have that you can come over to customize and you can change things like colors and your logo as you can see here if i wanted to this is my basic um, wordpress website i can change the site identity to the name of our church and then the church's tagline or motto we can customize windows, midgets, home, widgets, homepage settings, and more. There's going to be a lot more app options down here for you, so just go through them step by step, and that will allow you to make any changes that you want to make. Um, another option that you have is you can install WordPress plugins. Now, WordPress plugins are going to add even more features and functionality. Maybe you want to add a calendar to your website. You can add that as well. But you can see there is tons of options. I'm just going to click on plugins here to show you some of the different options that I have on my WordPress website. Now, again, you don't need all of these. Um, this is things that are maybe like uh, building a website 201, but what you have right now is really good enough to get started. So now that we have those basics out of the way, if we wanted to, we can click on pages just like this. And then as you can see, these are the different types of pages that we have. And what I could do is I could click on add new, and then I could create a page about, um, about church. And then here you can put in information about your church. So this church was founded on blah blah dot and then you can keep writing now this is what's called gutenberg now gutenberg makes it easier for you to write and so what we can do here is we can hit enter and then we can actually add in an image if we wanted to and if we ha don't have images already uploaded we can click on upload and find images on our computer so maybe we want to add an image of the church of the congregation we can click on that like that and then just add that in for example. And then finally, once you're done, you can click publish. Now these are for pages. Pages are going to be static. They're there for the long haul. If you have updates, maybe you want to talk about the new, um, new doors that you installed for the building fund, or maybe the upcoming festival, that's when you might want to create a post. Now a blog post is simply, as you can see here, all of these different blog posts are designed to just engage the reader engage the audience to help them learn more information these are going to be updated more frequently pages are more static and to uh, create a new blog post you just click on add new and then you can just create a new 
blog post just like that. Give it a title, you know, uh, SBC Kenosha 25th Annual Reunion or, you know, uh, Pastor's Appreciation Day or whatever it may be. Now, there are a few settings that I want you to take a look at. If we come down over here, we're going to click on Settings like this. And here, this is where you can change your site title, so SBC Kenosha and your tag name. Um, you can leave all the rest of this the same and then make sure you click save. If we come down to writing, we can leave all of this as is. Go to reading and we want to make sure that we have a static page, our welcome page, um, activated. If we go to discussion, we can leave all of that as is. Media, once again, we're going to leave it all as is. Permalinks, and this is really important. Um, you want to make sure that your permalinks are for the post name, as you can see here. So right now, your post, and it's, this is what it's set to, it's defaulted as plain. So anytime someone uploads a, a brand new blog post or web page, it'll be P equals one, two, three, seven, nine, eight. You want it to be post name just because it's a little bit cleaner. People understand what they're looking at and where they're going. Once you change that, click save. Privacy, you can leave as is, and then that is it. So if we jump back over here, the final thing that we actually need to do is we need to share our new website on social media. If you have a Facebook group, go ahead and share that. You can also give some sort of incentive. Hey, the first you know 100 people that share our, our new page get something, you know, a free t-shirt, a church t-shirt or or 50% off of on a fish fry, whatever it may be. And so really it's as easy as this. It's a simple four step process, but you wanna make sure that you click the first link in the description to get that web hosting a domain name. That's really gonna set everything else up. If you have any questions, you need help with this, comment down below and I'd be happy to actually set this up for you. Um, it will be a minor fee to set it up, but if this is something that you're interested in, comment down below and let me know and I'll actually work with you. Uh, this was Web Hosting Rewind, helping you set up a church website. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.